Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And thank you all. As always, first I have to give honor to God for keeping me, protecting me, and ordering my steps on this journey. It is an honor and privilege to stand before you today to be sworn in for the second term as the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Illinois. <laughs> Governor Pritzker has already acknowledged all the constitutional officers and distinguished guests, so I will simply add how grateful I am for your leadership and presence today. Thank you as well to Illinois Appellate Court Justice Fredrina M. Lyle for administering the oath of office, and to my co-pastor Michelle Dodson for your powerful prayer over me this morning. My husband Brian is one of the smartest, kindest, and coolest brothers I know. <laughs> he is my best friend, has a mind filled with random facts, apparently so he's ready if Jeopardy ever calls and reminds me daily that it's not about who I am, but whose I am. I thank God for you and I love you, babe. And to our four beautiful daughters, Tyler, Cassidy, Ryan, and Mackenzie, you are my four heartbeats. You help me to stay grounded in an unpredictable world, and I love you for that. To my father, Henry, a Navy veteran who turns 90 this March, who marched, yeah. <laughs> who marched in Selma alongside Dr. King and the late John Lewis and always taught me that there is never a time to be silent in the face of injustice. <laughs> and to my mother, Velma, who seven years ago joined the ancestors and didn't make it to see me make history as the first black lieutenant governor of our state, whose gentle hands and loving arms taught me that just because the world may seem cold and hard doesn't mean that we have to respond in kind. Thank you both for raising me to be the strong woman that I am today. To the dedicated state employees and leaders in our administration, including the entire team in the office of the Lieutenant Governor, I so appreciate you. Thank you for making me a better public servant. And I also want to thank all of the election workers, volunteers, and voters who turned out in this election cycle to prove when we need it to that we don't take our democracy for granted. Lastly, thank you to our governor, J.B. Pritzker, for your tireless commitment to our state and its people. When we began this journey, we resolved to roll up our sleeves, do the hard work, and provide the governance and leadership our citizens deserve. We didn't know what our first term had in store for us, yet we continue to meet every challenge we face. I am grateful for your friendship, and am proud to serve alongside you. Four years ago, I stood before you and shared the story of my family history, recorded by my grandmother and tucked into the Bible upon which I took my oath of office, then and now. It spanned the roots planted by my great-great-grandfather, William Stevens, and his twin brother, Daniel, who were born into slavery and after emancipation, cultivated a community by tending to the land. To the story of my maternal grandfather, Wilbur Slaughter, one of the early members of the Dearborn Realtors that fought for the right of every person, no matter their color, to become homeowners. This history, is a record of how my ancestors exemplified greatness in the way wildflowers that burst through cracks in the sidewalk are a reminder that the earth lives, breathes, and blossoms with us and for us. The story of my family is one of deep commitment to our communities and our fellow citizens. My ancestors understood the importance of being a part of something larger, something bigger than ourselves. This history 
that lives within me, that I carry in my DNA, shows me that even now as Lieutenant Governor, it's not just about what I do, but who I am and being who I am authentically and unapologetically. In this role, I can dedicate myself to showing the people of Illinois the fullness of who you are, of who we are. I understand, just as my ancestors did over 100 years ago, that caring for each other is the only way forward. I understand that regardless of our differences, we have a responsibility to each other in a world that has put us on guard we must always strive to see each other. As I have traveled our great state, I've talked to people who relate to my story and experiences, people who share my viewpoints, and also met many people who do not. Nevertheless, these people and stories all make up a beautiful tapestry that is our state, our community. These experiences and interactions led me to ask myself, what can I learn from the stories of others? What can we all gain if we open our minds and our hearts to the experiences that are different than our own? And if we refuse to listen to each other, how do we give everyone a voice in the story that we're writing right now? These questions brought me here today, and on the journey of these last four years, these questions revealed all that we can build together when we listen and learn from each other. In Cairo, a community deprived of the needs for a secure, healthy life that has gone seven years without a grocery store, we went there and asked, how can we help? We reached out to those who have been accustomed to being unheard, ignored, and silenced because they are a part of the Illinois story. With residents leading the way, I was focused on convening stakeholders and community members through our Ag Connects Us All initiative to demonstrate that empathy is an action. And in just a few short weeks, I'm excited to go back to Cairo to cut the ribbon on a cooperative grocery store that will be run by the community and for the community. As chair of the Illinois Council on Women and Girls, we asked, how can we decide what's best for the girls in our state if they don't have an outlet to tell us what they need? And that's why we made space for them at the table. And we have now named the second round of 19 girls who will bring their diverse voices to advise us, the governor and the General Assembly, on supporting them and creating the safe spaces they need through the Girls Committee. And in communities across our state that have been harmed by the war on drugs, and the violence and trauma caused by punitive policies, we asked, how can the groups most impacted be part of changing the narrative with us? Through the Restore, Reinvest, and Renew program, we have invested more than $144 million back into those communities so that young people in Aurora and Peoria and East St. Louis can play sports and after-school programs and learn the skills to thrive in school and beyond. <laughs> On the R3 board that I chair, members of these communities in every corner of our state, including and especially those impacted by the justice system, have a seat beside me. And I'm so proud of the difference they have made with their insights. Our path forward is about understanding that the issues that matter to so many of us are not bound by ge geography, nor are the solutions contained to one person or one idea. From the student in Edwardsville who is studying to become a teacher to give back to their community by uplifting the next generation, to the daughter in Redbud who is caring for her mother with Alzheimer's, a story that I related to deeply, 
having cared for my own mother. We all have the power to build the future we want and deserve because we all have a voice. This is what I want for our state, for our community. It's more than an agenda. It's being what our state, our country, and our world needs us to be. As I approach the next four years, I often think of the African philosophy of Ubuntu, which means I am because we are. We are each shaped by our relationships with each other. How we interact with each other should reflect our inherent human connectedness. Ubuntu communicates a spirit of togetherness and a willingness to work towards a common goal for the sake of our humanity. We can accomplish so much if we rise up and demonstrate the best of humanity. Know that your heartache in the face of strife, your hopes for your children, your faith in tomorrow. I listened to you as you shared these feelings with me and I carry them with me every single day. These reflections into your resilience and perspectives have driven the work that we have done so far. And the work we have left to do is centered on bringing people together creating opportunity for all, and carrying out a vision for Illinois that leaves no one behind. My ancestors demonstrated a deep faith in their dreams and the world that they were creating for their grandchildren. I have that same faith. Like each of you, I want to create a better world for my grandchildren, just as my grandparents did for me. The roots from which I have grown and the shoulders upon which I stand have led me here today in service to you, our state, and our country. Illinois, I see you. I see you. I see you. Thank you for trusting me with this responsibility, and thank you for being a part of our story. Thank you. Thank you.